All right, I want to talk a little bit about AR-15 pistols. Now, AR-15 pistols are getting a, a real resurge in popularity. There's a lot of different companies building the pistol uppers. Uh, there's a lot of different people doing different things with the back end of the pistols. And there's a lot of interesting things going on as far as people training with them and using them and realizing that there's some huge benefits to the compact AR platform. The ability to fire an AR-15, essentially, uh, the same exact thing that's going on with the bullet, as long as you're getting enough muzzle velocity out of your, your shorter barrel. Uh, this this is very much like the SBR, it's a short barreled rifle ballistics that people talk about when they talk about either the six inch, seven and a half inch, 10 and a half inch, 11 inch, 12 inch, anything under 16 inches here in the US is considered a short barreled rifle. So as soon as you put a stock on this, this becomes a, a big issue as far as the law. Now it's not illegal, quote unquote, but you do have to jump through a lot of hoops. You gotta pay a little extra money. You gotta wait a long time. And there are some states where that, that option doesn't even exist. So for a lot of people, the AR pistol makes a lot of sense because it gives you a lot of the benefits of a compact platform shooting that 5.56 round out of a barrel that is shorter than we would normally get out of a carbine with a collapsed stock. So that's the advantage. Now here's the thing. Uh, as far as SBRs go, I don't own one. Um, I've never bothered to jump through the hoops of any of the uh, NFA, the National Firearms Act type uh, suppressors, short barreled rifles, fully automatic firearms. Um, I just don't see a big enough advantage for me from a defensive standpoint um, to go through the hoops just to have the novelty, just to have it in my collection. AR pistols, on the other hand, is something that I've been dealing with since the 90s, um, since during the original assault weapons ban, looking at how to build uh, an AR-15 platform pistol that was reliable. That was the big issue. You know, we used to have the little short three inch buffer tubes. Um, sometimes you had an over the top kind of situation. Uh, we couldn't have any breaks. We couldn't have any kind of uh muzzle brake, flash suppressor, anything on the end during the assault weapons ban period. So there was a lot of things that made it just not really a viable option, not to mention the fact that there weren't a lot of reliable systems as far as the combinations of the gas system and the buffer tubes that we could rely on so that we could have a gun that we knew was going to work for vehicle defense, personal defense, home defense. So it wasn't much of an option. Fast forward into the 2000s, um, actually did a big write-up in SWAT magazine about um, AR pistols and particularly focusing on one that was offered, uh, made out of uh, carbon. So it was actually a polymer gun and it was a uh, short barreled, six inch fluted barrel, very rigid system. And again, not much going on as far as a long buffer tube. Well, the new thing that's happened now in the last, let's say five to six years is a resurgence in interest in the AR pistol with extended buffer tubes. So these longer buffer tubes, obviously with some padding back here and barrel lengths of 10 to 12 inches, making sure that we're still getting the velocity that we want to get the bullets to perform properly, perform like rifle bullets should, either reliably expanding or tumbling when they hit the person that we're shooting at, trying to stop them from hurting us around our vehicle inside of our home. Now, it's not very likely that you're going to be carrying this as a personal defense tool under a jacket or something like that. But where we get into trouble, where there's some confusion, is in the proper use of the AR-15 pistol. Now, if you go back and look at that SWAT magazine article, what you're going to see is some pictures of me talking about using this as a personal defense tool or especially like in an executive protection team setting where you're extending and pushing this gun out against the sling, against whether it's a bungee sling or a standard sling like this one, pushing out and getting some tension there so that you get some stability as you reach out to full extension. Now, that's certainly a viable method, and it works really well with the that originally uh, was shown to be with the old M, uh, the uh, H&K series uh, MP5, the K version, the very small version that has the pistol grip, very short version, and you could drive that out, that MP5, against the sling and shoot it very, very well. And obviously set up with a red dot optic like this, it gives you a great option. So that's the primary way that people are taught to shoot these, and it's the primary way that people have shot guns like this for a long time. So let's take a look at how that's going to work. We go ahead and load and chamber, and I'm just going to stand here. I'm going to drive out. This is a, a typical home defense, maybe around the vehicle kind of defensive distance. In fact, this is further than it would be maybe across my bedroom if I had to defend myself with this type of firearm. I drive out. I see my dot. When I get my dot, I fire a shot. No problem. Shot comes up. I drive out. I can manage recoil. Multiple shots. You can see not bad grouping, and it's relatively fast. Drive out again. I hit a magazine change, I come back in the same as I do with a regular AR. I insert, I reach back and pull, and you'll see that this time what I've done is I've switched to a smaller magazine. Obviously a big part of this gun is the compactness, right? So a smaller magazine, a 20 round magazine, as long as your gun works reliably with them, it can be a great option for this pistol, especially if you're keeping it for vehicle defense. If you're securing one inside of a vehicle, this can be a great option, the smaller magazine. Now here's where it comes to the interesting moment. The padding, the different things that you'll see, different configurations back here can make it awfully tempting to take this pistol 
and put it up against your shoulder and get a good cheek weld and shoot it just like a rifle. And that's where the gray area is. And honestly, it's something I'm concerned about for our community and for the industry as a whole, because while the different attachments and different paddings and different buttstock looking things are absolutely coming from the BATFE with letters that say you can attach this to a pistol and not be in violation of law. My concern is that in U.S. code and in many state laws, one of the descriptors of a rifle includes the intention to shoot the firearm from the shoulder. So if I all of a sudden were to say to you, hey, here's how you shoot this thing, you push it up against your, your shoulder, your chest, you put your cheek down on it, and that's how you bring the gun up and shoot it. Well, essentially, if this is why you buy it, if you buy it to do that, and you go out and train with it, and I'm telling you as an instructor, this is how you do it, then I think that clearly changes the intended use of the firearm from being a pistol, something that you shoot out from your body, to something that you shoot up against your body. So until I see a letter from the BATFE that says, no, 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 it does not constructively create a rifle if you intend to shoot this thing from your shoulder, that's not something I'm willing to teach. Now, that would be four points of contact. That would be the traditional rifle, one, two, three, four points of contact when I come up to my cheek. However, pistol shooting uh, can involve maybe three points of contact. So if we look at the letter of the law and we realize that we can't take this and put it up against our shoulder or our chest area, I'm sure it would be an extension of shouldering this device, maybe I can put my cheek on this and get three points of contact. And I've seen some other instructors do this as well. And there are some devices that attach the chin, which, which I'm not a big fan of. It doesn't seem like that's a great idea. Obviously, if I'm breathing, my chin, my mouth is moving. But I can put this up to my cheek. Let's say that I wanted to take a shot at the head and I put my cheek up on the gun. Now, I can take that shot with a little more stability. So as opposed to just kind of hip shooting this thing or free floating it or taking it off the sling, and then just driving out and holding it like this in this kind of a situation, which certainly could work. I could fire a shot into the chest this way and get a good hit. This way I can pull the gun back in, put it up against my face, obviously stop talking, fire that shot into the head area. So that's one way to get a little more stability without having to worry about the shouldering issue. So AR pistols, absolutely, I think a modern, good, viable option for home defense, maybe for a good vehicle gun. Um, but be careful how you train with them. Be careful how you build them. Make sure obviously you're complying with all the laws that you've got a lower that can be built as a pistol, that you aren't taking something that was sold to you as a rifle and changing its configuration completely to make it a pistol. A lot of things to worry about when it comes to the AR pistols, but I think they're worth worrying about because it absolutely is a viable defensive system.